Yesterday we talked about what properties a parallelogram had. Today we're going to talk about how to show a quadrilateral is in fact a parallelogram. So we're not going to start out with it being a parallelogram. We're going to test to make sure that it is a parallelogram. And the first thing that you can do is you can use the definition of a parallelogram to make that test happen. You can check to see that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. Obviously, if I was looking at a picture standpoint of view, I'd want to look to see if they'd mark those opposite sides as being parallel. If I was working on a coordinate plane, I would want to use slope to make sure that the opposite sides had the same slope. And we should remember that the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can use the definition if we're looking at a picture. We can make sure that the sides are parallel in the picture. If it's on a coordinate plane, we have to use the slope formula to check to see if opposite sides have equal slopes. We can check if opposite sides are equal. Again, if I was looking from a picture standpoint of view, I can look for those little hash marks that show that they're equal. This shows that opposite sides are equal, so this shape would be forced to be a parallelogram. If I was looking at a coordinate plane, I would use the distance formula. to make sure that the opposite sides have the same measurement. We could check to see if opposite angles are congruent or equal. This can only be done from a picture standpoint of view. We don't have a way at this point to check how big an angle is. But they would have to mark both pairs of opposite angles as being the same. We can check to see if one angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. If I wanted to check it in this figure, if I want my one angle to be angle A, I'd have to, have to check to see that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B was equal to 180. That's one of the consecutive angles. But I'd also have to check to see that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D would be equal to 180. I've got to check both consecutive angles from that angle to make sure they add up to 180 to force this into being a parallelogram. The next test that you can do, you can check to see if the diagonals 
bisect each other. So you can check to see if when you have diagonals that it cut each of those diagonals into two equal parts. On a coordinate plane, this can be checked by using the midpoint formula. If they both have the same midpoint, then the diagonals bisect each other. And the midpoint formula would say x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. And last but not least, we can check if one set of sides is both parallel and congruent or equal. From a picture standpoint of view, if they've marked it as being parallel, they've put that little triangle on it, and they've marked it as being equal, then this shape would have to be a parallelogram. If I was on the coordinate plane, I would have to use slope on a pair of sides, but I'd also have to use distance to make sure that they had the same length. questions on the six tests to see if something is a parallelogram or not. Well, let's look at some examples then. Example one. Because they're talking about angles, I could be using one of two things. I could be using opposite angles or congruent, or I could be looking at consecutive angles being supplementary. If I do consecutive angles, it is going to force me into a situation where I have an x and a y in the same equation, and I might not want to do that. If I do opposite angles as being congruent, I don't have that situation. So 5y minus 26 has to be equal to 4y plus 4 would be one equation. The other equation would be 7x is equal to 56. I'm going to just make sure that both sets of opposite angles are equal to each other to force this to be a parallelogram. I'm going to subtract 4y from both sides. I now have y minus 26 equals 4. And adding 26, I get y is equal to 30. When I divide by 7, I get x is equal to 8. What test am I going to use on example 2? Opposite sides being equal or congruent. And again, the two equations, 4y minus 9, would have to be the same as 2y plus 5. Opposite sides have to be equal. Likewise, 3x plus 4 would have to be the same as 5x minus 2. And again, we would simply solve these two equations. I'm going to subtract 2y. 2y minus 9 equals 5. 
adding 9 to y equals 14, which means y is 7. Subtracting 3x, 4 equals 2x minus 2. Adding 2, 6 equals 2x. Dividing x is 3. Questions on the first two examples. We did one by using opposite angles as being congruent. We did the next one by using opposite sides being equal. Yes? Um, the y, the number 2 on the fixed test parallelogram, when you use the distance of If it's on a coordinate plane, if they give you a set of ordered pairs. Okay? If they do this, And I'm just making these up. Then you would check to see if AB is equal to, and if you think about it, if this goes around, A, B, C, D, I'd have to check to see that AB is equal to CD. And I'd have to check that AD was equal to what? BC. And how would I check those? I'd use what? Distance formula. Okay? Example 3. What am I going to use? Diagonals have to bisect. If diagonals bisect, it will give me y equals 3x plus 11. And in the other one, it's going to give me 3y equals x plus 1. This is a system of equations. Since y is already equal to something, it means in the other equation where I see y, what can I put in its place? So I have 3 parentheses 3x plus 11 is equal to x plus 1. And I'm going to distribute that 3 through the parentheses. 9x plus 33 is equal to x plus 1. Putting my x's together, I now have 8x plus 33 is equal to 1. Subtracting 33, I get 8x equals a negative 32, which means x is equal to a negative 4. And I can come back over here and plug that in. y equals 3 times a negative 4 plus 11, so y is a negative 1. Now, I will tell you this problem is okay for showing you how to do something, but it's flawed. Why? A length can't be negative. X or Y could be negative, but when Y is by itself, it definitely couldn't be what? Negative. And if I plugged a negative 4 back up in here, negative 4 plus 1 would give me negative 3, and this segment length can't be negative. I left a flawed problem in here to show you that sometimes it's worth plugging a number back in to see if it gives you a negative value for a segment, because when you go to take the EOC, those problems won't be flawed. So you can check to see if your answer at least is reasonable. This definitely is a flawed question. We could not have a negative segment length. 
Okay? Questions on example three. Example four. Which one of my tests do I want to use this time? Which angles? I can't use opposite angles because I don't have anything to compare this one to. So I've got to use one angle is supplementary to both consecutive. So I'm going to check to see if these two add up to equal to 180. I'm going to make sure that these two add up to equal 180. 4x plus 17y plus 48 equals 180. Looks like we have a system of equations again. 17y plus 48 plus 5y equals 180. I'm going to solve this one first. What's your question? The reason I didn't do opposite angles is they didn't give me a what? An opposite angle. There was nothing over here to compare it to. Okay, I'm going to combine my like terms in this one. I am going to solve this one first because it only has y's in it. That gives me 22y plus 48 equals 180. When I subtract 48 from both sides, I get 22y is equal to 132. So when I divide by 22, y is equal to 6. six. And then I'm going to come back up in here where this y is, and I'm going to replace it with 6. 4x, 17 times 6 is 102, plus 48 is equal to 180. Combine my like terms, 4x plus 150 equals 180. Subtract 150, 4x is equal to 30, and divide by 4x is going to be 7.5. Yep? After you got y, couldn't you just do opposite angles after that? I mean, yeah. Once I knew this, it would have to force it to be the same. But unless you show that these two add up to 180, you don't know that for certain. So I would really encourage you to use the same rule that you started with. Questions? Okay. Next examples are easier. They are yes and no type questions, but you have to explain why. In example five, is that going to be a parallelogram? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because the diagonals bisect each other. Very good. Example six, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Why? Opposite angles are congruent. Everybody okay with example five and example six? Example seven, yes or no? Yes. Uh, you could do that. It is not what I would do, but it's okay. If you notice that this has side angle side, then you could in fact say that opposite sides are what? Congruent. You could. I would have used a different method. 
What are these angles? Alternate interior angles. If alternate interior angles are congruent, lines are what? Parallel. That means one set of sides, both parallel and congruent. Example eight, yes or no? No, not enough information. They only gave me information about one set of sides and they didn't tell me anything additional. So I don't know that they're parallel. I can't do anything with it. Everybody good with examples seven and eight? I'm gonna come back to your homework in just a second. Oh, didn't put it up there. Thought I had it up there. Didn't save it. Let's talk about the little sheet of paper that you picked up on your way in the door. This is in fact going to be a take home quiz. Okay, I did not give you an example of